Right, hello everyone. Welcome back to Psychology On Demand. Uh, today I want to introduce you to Dugas's worry model, uh, which is a CBT approach for worry. Um, here you'll be understanding the model, what keeps it all together. And really good for trainees, potentially just someone who wants to understand their own worry. Um, and it's good for really any approach. Um, so if you want to understand a little bit more, stay tuned and I'll explain it all um, and uh, what it entails. Right, so the worry formulation by Dugas. So there are some really, uh, there are some really other good models. So um, Wells has his metacognitive approach to worry, um, but Dugas is the one I was taught in and a very popular one. So let's go through this. So first of all, the formulation suggests that there is a trigger. There's gotta be something that we're reacting to. It could be an internal trigger, a reminder of something could be um, reminding a reminder that you've got to go on a trip somewhere. That could be the trigger. Okay. Now there's an interpretation to a worried thought to start the process. So your first thought might be something might go wrong with my car. Now for worriers, they, kind of, they don't kind of dismiss this. They're in quite a strong pattern of always thinking. Now this can be very subtle. They might not know they're doing it that often and they might fall very easily into the pattern. So what we're doing at the very beginning is helping warriors understand these patterns. Notice when they're slipping into worry episodes. So worry episodes start to expand, become more and more catastrophic. People are creating a world that hasn't happened yet and thinking through all the worst case scenarios. So this is the worry episode, the growing of the worry. So this comes with lots of physical difficulties. So sometimes they may experience increased heart rate, breathing difficulties, uh, so um, more shallow breathing, um, muscle tension, and it can go to very high heights of anxiety. Um, however, what you often find actually in worry is that it's kind of, it's, it's high-ish, it's like five, six out of ten, um, but it's consistent. So muscle tension is a very common um, described difficulty. And this, over a long period of time, leads to exhaustion. And this is why you can have comorbid depression, where someone has lost energy, motivation, because worry has meant that they're not able to access reward and value in life. So this is called the worry spine. It's the first thing we write out with someone and we just do that bit. That's it, none of this other complex stuff. Just this simple, straightforward line. And what we're doing is we're helping them move this worry episode. And sometimes, if they haven't been a worrier all their life or they haven't got really fixed beliefs, it can move and they can move forward. What you find though, and if you watch my video on step two and step three, is that it becomes more step three when it can't move. And what you often find is that in step three, the worry episode also has worry beliefs. So I've put this down here on the bottom right, and there's a questionnaire you can do called the Why Worry Two that kind of helps you find your worry beliefs. But it can be things like worry keeps me safe, worry helps me be productive, or worry shows I care. So what we're trying to do is help people shift beliefs so they can finally let go of some of these worries. So that's the first steps of therapy. But as you go through, you then start to look at these behaviours, uncertainty behaviours. And what Dugas said is that what a worrier does is they struggle to sit with uncertainty. So for instance, going a new route to work, this would feel uncertain to someone who who's worries a lot. And what they'll try and do is plan, prepare, make lists. And they're really trying to push to excess behaviours that try and give them a sense of certainty. Now the problem is, is that this also makes life tougher and you can become more worried because all your behaviours are danger focused. It can also make you more worried because trying to plan for things like social engagements 
can be really tough because it's very hard to predict how things are going to go. And what you often find is that by trying to do all these excess behaviours, people then start to forget things and it's harder to concentrate. So this is the first arrow that comes back on itself. And that's where worry and feelings of worry lead into behaviours that can cause more worry. So you go through them, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's a good problem solving behaviour. And you, you might write it down and put a line for it and actually discuss with the person and say, no, I don't think this is one of them. So you're always working collaboratively. The last bit of the formulation is the problem orientation. So here, what it, what's happening is that someone becomes very afraid of dealing with problems, very avoidant of problems, and they might have thoughts like, I can't deal with this, I'm not good enough to deal with this, and it's going to go wrong. So in this area, of course, it leads back to more worry because things build up. So this is a very easy one just to write in and put the arrow back. And sometimes you don't have to be as Socratic with that one as maybe with the avoidance behaviours of uncertainty. Now, in this one, what we're doing is we're helping people challenge those thoughts, show them that they can deal with things and help them break down the problem into pieces. So. What you're really trying to do is break down the beliefs that behind the worry episode, give some techniques for letting worries go, help people challenge uncertainty and build confidence, and help them approach problems. So this is the general overview. If you'd like to see more, please have a look at my channel. I'll be bringing out lots more videos as we go through on worry and worry interventions. And I'm going to be creating a set of resources so that you can access all these formulations online. So please do stay tuned. Feel free to subscribe if you want to follow for more information. Or if you've just popped in for this one video, um, I'm, I'm glad you've come to have a look. And uh, I hope you found it helpful. All the best. Bye.